Violet Evergarden is my pick for most beautiful show of the season, though After the Rain is a close second. Which is great, since prior to release it felt like it was in a perpetual hype machine and I thought there was no way it could live up. Kyoto Animation has definitely met expectations visually, and though I've heard complaints about the pacing so far, I personally haven't had any issues with the scenic beauty I've been treated to over the last three weeks. And since I haven't liked a Kyoto Ani show this much since Hyoka, I want to talk about the third episode of the season, specifically analyzing why the Bell Tower is such an effective lens through which to view the themes and characters of the episode. And Kyoto Animation made sure that the tower was signposted as important right at the beginning, being the first shot of the episode. The second shot of the episode is an establishing shot, placing the bell tower in Leiden, and bringing us back to the tower for the third shot, which pulls us down to the ground level for this shot, of children playing some game. These simple shots and camera movements bring us naturally into the episode, while also creating the tower as a fixed point in the viewer's mind. You shouldn't be surprised when it's featured multiple times throughout the episode, though I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here, since we still have a theme to establish after all. After being introduced to Luculia, we establish that Violet is a wicked good doll on the technical level. She gets full marks for grammar and vocab, her typing speed is flexible and precise, and her memory is seemingly eidetic. This isn't surprising given what we've seen in the past, but it's good to establish that because it strengthens this next scene even more. When she reads into the letter she ghost wrote for Luculia out loud, it becomes abundantly clear that she is still unable to read into the feelings behind the words. As the teacher says, the feelings they truly wish to express, and what Violet has written is not a a letter because letters are an instrument for communicating a person's feelings. Violet's only issue, shown in the last episode and clearly stated again here, is her inability to tap into those feelings, which is a great theme. And the bell tower represents that both physically and thematically. Luculia and Violet walk home together, giving Luculia the opportunity to bring us back to the bell tower and give us a mesmerizing shot of the city and a flashback to the major. The Major wanted Violet to see this view because the city and the people down below is what they, the men who lost their lives, fought to protect. It also reminds us that the Major wanted Violet to live and be free, and that the Major's words are what set Violet on this path. From the bottom of the bell tower looking up, there are only snippets of light coming in through windows, but what awaits at the top is the full view, the totality of those threads. Violet's journey, to understand the feelings people wish to truly express, her desire to learn what I love you means is physically represented by the bell tower. Violet is still at the bottom, but she takes her first step when she writes the letter from Luculia to her brother. And to be clear, it's just a first step, which the staff makes abundantly clear by having the instructor say it at the end of the episode. The bell tower is the physical representation of Violet's journey, with the view of Leiden equating to understanding the major's words, as she literally does when she arrives at the top with Luculia and remembers his desire for her to see this view. The main thematic relevancy of the bell tower for this episode, though, lies in how it provides a lens for the relationship between Luculia and her brother. Luculia's brother is also a soldier, who is injured presumably in the line of duty and suffers from feeling immensely guilty for the death of their parents, as he was serving on the Western Front, which is where their parents died. We're treated to a flashback of the two of them climbing the bell tower as children, with Luculia's brother holding out a hand to help her up the tower. When they get to the top, her hat goes flying, taken away on a breeze, and he reaches out to try and grab it but can't. And in the present, lying in front of the tower at night alone and beat up, reaches out to the sky as though he could prevent the loss, to prevent his sister from losing her hat or losing their parents, but failing on both counts. The guilt he feels is matched by the scenes he appears in, nighttime, and places with dark lighting. Luculia has tried to reach out, literally as we're shown in this shot, but is pulled back because he won't take it and she just can't find the words to say. But Violet brings him salvation in the form of a letter that she's ghostwritten for his sister and a light, which he strikes out against at first. But Violet's blunt personality brushes that off, whereas Luculia might have pulled away by that point. But a simple thank you and an appreciation that he is still around is enough for him to know that Luculia doesn't begrudge him for his perceived failures. And that moment later allows for Luculia's reached out hand to be taken and to be relied upon until he can stand on his own two feet. Literally. And that moment at the top of the tower, with them smiling at one another, him finally in the light and seeing what he fought for, his sister and the city, with the cycle of him helping her and now her helping him complete, is a truly beautiful moment that honestly brought a tear to my eye. And the bell that rings when Luculia goes to get Violet after the letter both symbolizes the omnipresent nature of the bell tower in Leiden and that a new day has dawned, both for Violet on her journey and the siblings as they move forward. Some stray thoughts. The small details in this episode are amazing. 
From the fourth shot at the beginning, showing two children who look similar to our main siblings, the young girl is even wearing a similar hat to the one that Luculia loses in the flashback. And speaking of, when Luculia walks to the top of the tower with Violet, we see her take off her hat since she already lost one from the wind. When Luculia and Violet enter the tower, we also see a young girl reading to a young boy, which in conjunction with the previous children seems to foreshadow the cycle of past to present. The bottle spilling over and dripping onto the brother's face in lieu of tears, but to show us that that's how he's dealing with his sorrow is a beautifully powerful moment. And of course, these two arguing, but ultimately drinking tea together before arguing again, is just another example of how the words people say are not necessarily the feelings they have. Just to bring it back to the bell tower before I end this off, the sequences of scaling the tower, first with Lakulia and Violet, and then Lakulia and her brother in flashback, are beautiful mirrors of each other. And moments like that make rewatching episodes like this a total joy. When Lakulia looks back at Violet, I have to wonder if she sees herself in Violet, not in the sense of needing help to scale it, but in the sense of needing someone to help her along the way to achieve achieve what she wants to achieve, in the same way that Violet helps her reach out to her brother in that letter. And that, similarly to how they managed to fit a rigorous class into five minutes, is all for this episode. If you're interested in something else that came out this season, check out our analysis on Darling and the Frank's first episode, or if you're a fan of volleyball, there's an analysis on Q for you. Leave us a comment if you think I'm right or crazy for reading too much into this, subscribe if this is your cup of tea, and see you again soon, maybe once it stops raining. Thanks for watching.